Good morning. Welcome to worship with Seminole Heights United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Tiffany and I'm so glad that you're joining us. Uh, we're glad that we're able to worship in person uh, today as well as online for those of you watching online. I invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. Come be filled. Come be filled with the Spirit. Let songs fill this house and praise fill our hearts. Together we sing, giving thanks to God. We give thanks now and at every time, in every place and every moment. We offer our thanks for everything in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements for us as we get ready uh, to worship together. As a reminder, if this is your first time worshiping with us, we invite you to fill out a welcome card. If you're here in person, those cards are in the back of the sanctuary and they just look like this. Uh, and if you are watching online, there's a link in the video to fill out a welcome card. Let us know that you're here and it's the best way to stay in touch with us. That will add you to our email list. Uh, make sure that you stay up to date with what's going on here at our church. Um, as you can see, uh, if you're here with us in person, we've resumed wearing masks during worship uh, following the CDC guidance um, for groups indoors. Um, so we just ask that you wear those masks. I thank you all for uh, being um, willing to do that, to be able to keep one another safe. And of course, you can continue to watch worship streamed online if you feel more comfortable doing that as well. Um, due to the possible weather and even it still looks like it might rain today, uh, the reception that we had planned for today after worship has been moved to August 28th, that's a Saturday, um, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, that'll be celebrating my new marriage, um, a chance for you all to get to meet my husband and to um, give us well wishes. So uh, that has been rescheduled. Uh, and. Um, we're going to assume that you're going to the event if you are SVP'd, but maybe if you're able to make it, if you weren't sure, let us know so we can just plan accordingly, make sure that we have uh, spots for everyone. So that'll be August 28th um, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, we are hiring a new family ministries director. Um, this is going to be a part-time position um, and things are still kind of moving around, but this will be someone to work with our children and youth of our church and our families. Um, and so we invite you to let folks know uh, if you know anyone in your community or in your life who might be a great fit for this position, um, have them contact us uh, through social media. Um, they can email office at semheights.com. Um, but we really want that great person who can help connect our families um, with our with our greater church and also plan outreach and connect with our community as well. So um, we're excited for all those opportunities and for a new season uh, for our church now, hopefully coming out of the pandemic, uh, that we can really enjoy the family ministry that we have had to put on hold for so long. Um, that is all I have for us at this time. 
Um, we're going to move into a time of prayer. Um, and I do want to call to your attention, um, there was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake in Haiti yesterday. Um, so we really want to keep uh, people, the people of Haiti uh, in our prayers. They have just been through so much. Um, our church is also going to be collecting a special offering um, to benefit um, the people of Haiti next Sunday. Um, you can give today. Uh, we just don't have the categories and everything all ready for you. Um, but we want to be a part of uh, the Methodist Church is already down there working and helping. And we want to be a part of that work that they're doing. Um, as a reminder, if you have a prayer request for us, we have prayer request cards. They're in the back of the sanctuary. There's a link online as well to fill that out. Um, this is how we know what to pray for for one another, how we um, stay united and connected as a church family. So make sure you let us know uh, if there's someone in your life or in your community who needs some prayer. If you need some prayer, um, you can fill it out on this card. You can always mark your prayer request confidential. Uh, and then it won't get sent out on the email to our prayer group. Um, but I invite you to, to connect with us in that way and to be a part of our prayer ministry of our church. Uh, so now let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, we come to you with awe and praise today. God, we just don't feel worthy. We know we're not good enough, and that's okay. We confess that we've made mistakes. We've not lived up to the promises we made, and we ask your forgiveness. God, we thank you that a new start is possible. We thank you for your love that allows us to try again to do better, to learn and grow. We thank you for your mercy and grace that is always with us. We pray for all those impacted by natural disasters right now. For those who've been and will be in the path of tropical storm Fred. For those in Haiti who've experienced a devastating earthquake. For all those in our world who are in pain. We ask for your healing and for our hearts to be moved to help. And God, we ask all this, praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite the children to come forward. We're going to have a children's message together. Amen. Say during the announcement, we're having children's Sunday school start back. Kids started back in school last week. Uh, so children's Sunday school is starting back today. Uh, during worship, kids will start here in the sanctuary, and then they'll go down to their class. So they can experience a little bit of worship with us, um, and they'll also have their, their lesson. All right, y'all. So... You all know that I was recently married, right? Yeah. And a lot of people sent me and my husband gifts. That's what people do when you get married. They send you a lot of presents because often you're starting a new house. You don't have all the things that you want to eat. We are so thankful for all of these gifts. And we want to make sure that people know. So we are writing a lot of thank you notes just like this one. On the front, it says, thank you. And then inside, we write and thank the person for what they gave us so that they know we're thankful. It makes people feel really good when we send them a thank you note for a gift. Now, when someone does something nice for you, your mom or dad might say what? What do you say? Thank you, right? You get a present? What do you say? Thank you. Now, we all know what to say, but 
Unfortunately, sometimes we forget, right? We get so excited, we might forget to say thank you. And there's a story in the Bible that helps us to remember to say thank you. Now, this story is about ten lepers. Now, do you know what a leper is? It's not a leopard, not an animal. It's someone who is really sick, and they have a disease on their skin. So their skin has, like, spots, and it just doesn't look right. And this disease causes sores all over the body, and it was really common in Jesus' day. And people thought that if you had this disease, you could just touch it from touching somebody. So the lepers were considered unclean. You couldn't touch them, you couldn't be friends with them, you couldn't go anywhere with them. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? No. So one day Jesus was walking through a small village and he saw 10 lepers, 10 of these people who were just really sick and you could see on their skin. And they stood far away from Jesus and they said to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They knew that Jesus could heal them. And so Jesus came to the lepers and he said to them, go to the priest and show yourself to them. And then the lepers, as they were on their way, those we're going to see right here, as they were on their way, they were healed. Their spots were gone. Their skin was completely healthy. And they were all praising God and they were just so happy. They ran through the town. But one of the lepers remembered and he went to Jesus and he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he said, thank you. Thank you for healing me. And Jesus said, weren't there ten of you that were healed? Where are the other nine? Only one remembered to say thank you. God does so much for us. God gives us everything that we have, our loving families, our homes, even providing for us to have food to eat. And it's important for us to say thank you to God. So let's stop right now. We're going to pray together. And we're going to say thank you to God for all the things that God has given us, okay? So let's put our hands together. Close your eyes. And you're going to repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for all you've given me. Help me. To be thankful. To be thankful. No matter what. No matter what. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Alright. Now you guys can go to your class. Are you guys ready? Yeah? Alright. <laughs> Continue in our worship time into a moment of offering. This is an opportunity for us to give back to God out of all that God has given to us to show our all of God's blessings. Oh, kept my mask on. There you go. <laughs> and um, you're invited to be a part of the ministry that we do here. Um, all the different ways that we uh, help in our community, that we help here in our church, that we're able to help people all over the world. Um, I started to mention Haiti. Um, the Florida Conference, the United Methodist Church, we are collecting a special offering that will go to Haiti. Um, you're welcome to contribute this Sunday. Um, like I said, next Sunday we'll have it all set up for you online and all of that so you can make sure your gift is marked um, for that offering to Haiti. But if you want our giving in person, um, you can just write um, what portion of your gift you want to go to that um, Haiti relief. Um, as a reminder, you can give, there's a lot of different ways you can give. Uh, we make it, try to make it as easy as possible for you. Uh, you can give here in person um, in one of our envelopes. Um, I have those, they look like this, right here. Um, you can also give through uh, online if you, uh, there's actually a QR code right here. If you take a picture of it, that'll send you a link to give. Um, you can text the word SEM Heights to the number 40101. Um, that will send you a link to give, or there's a link right there in the worship video to make a gift as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can give, that you can be a part of what we're doing here in Seminole Heights, um, in our church, and all over the world. 
So we're now gonna move into our offering time and Judy is gonna play for us an offering song as we worship God together. Our scripture reading for today is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you saw I talked to the kids about thank you cards. And if you have ever gotten married or just had a big celebration, maybe for graduation or another life milestone and received a lot of gifts, you might remember that overwhelming feeling of writing lots of thank you cards. Now, I know it's not required, but we all like to have our gifts acknowledged when we make the extra effort, right? It's just nice to get that thank you card back. When I was younger, I was really bad about writing thank you cards. Of course, you know, when I saw the person, I would thank them for giving me a gift, but I just didn't really see the point of sending them a card. My mom never forced me to write them when I got older, but she told me that it was polite. She really encouraged me to do it. For many birthdays and Christmases, my grandparents would mail me gifts since we didn't always get to celebrate together. And I didn't always get a chance to thank them in person. And I would forget to send them thank you notes. When I was 13 or 14, a few weeks after my birthday, I was talking on the phone with my grandmother, you know, and uh, she asked me if I had received her gift. And I said, oh, yes, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And she said, well, I'm glad to hear it. Since I didn't get a thank you card, I wasn't sure if my gift had gotten lost in the mail. Now, maybe she was serious. Maybe she was just passive aggressively reminding me what is polite and what is respectful. Either way, I realized then that the thank you note wasn't about how I wanted to spend my time, it was about connecting with my grandmother who had taken the time and effort to let me know that she loved me by sending me this gift. 
The verses for today remind us of the importance of giving thanks. It's the capstone to this teaching about how to live as wise people. Now, some of these words aren't ones that we really use often. Kind of sounds like advice from a grandmother, someone from another time. So I'm going to share a different translation of these verses with you. This is from The Message, a paraphrased translation of the Bible into a little more common language. It might be easier for us to wrap our heads around. So it starts. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. Don't drink too much wine. This cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God, huge drafts of him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our Master, Jesus Christ. When we read these verses in this more modern language, we see that these words could be written today. They still apply. These are still desperate times. Unfortunately, this pandemic isn't over yet. Just living a normal life is stressful. Every day counts. Any advice to not drink too much? That definitely still applies, right? A new study published by scientists and doctors at the University of Southern California in March of this year found that between April and June of 2020, sales of alcoholic beverages increased by 34% compared to the same period of time in 2019, with tobacco sales increasing by 13%. One of the authors of the study, Dr. Brian Lee said, these are significant jumps and show that the stress, boredom, and loneliness caused by the pandemic may have led to increased alcohol and tobacco use. In particular, they found that the increases in alcohol and tobacco sales were the highest among younger adults, ethnic minorities, those with younger children, and or large families, and those with higher incomes. Among those drinking more during the pandemic, many are doing so in an effort to cope with stress, anxiety, and depression said Dr. George F. Koob, the director of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. While alcohol can temporarily dampen anxiety and other uncomfortable feelings, the relief is short-lived and negative emotions tend to increase above normal when the alcohol wears off. Although increases in drinking habits to cope with temporary stress doesn't necessarily mean that someone has an alcohol problem. Doctors and scientists are concerned that this prolonged nature of the pandemic combined with these early indications of increased alcohol sales may put people at risk of developing these traits. So while we might, while we might laugh at this advice, do not get drunk with wine, okay, haha, it's in the Bible. This was written 2,000 years ago, but it still applies. We need to be reminded not to let anything control our lives, whether it's drinking or being worried or work or relationships or money. Anything can control our lives if we let it. And that's what the writer here is warning us about. And that's where all of this connects with singing and giving thanks to God. When we sing and give thanks to God through worship together and by ourselves, we're acknowledging God's place in our lives. We're reminded of God's love, forgiveness, and goodness. As humans, we're always trying to move on to the next thing, right? We're always thinking about making plans. We're making plans for after the pandemic. We're making plans for when the kids start school. We make plans for our next vacation, for retirement, for the promotion, 
whatever is coming next. The writer here reminds us to be present in the moment. When we pause and give thanks to God, we can enjoy what's happening in our lives in a more meaningful way. Now, singing and worship is just one way that we can give thanks to God. The writer also says that how we live is an expression of our thanks to God. So what does that look like? Think about it. God made everything and everyone. So when we care for each other and for the earth, we're giving thanks to God. When we help someone in need, we're giving thanks to God. And when we give of our time, talent, and treasure to our church, to other causes, we are giving thanks to God. So how we spend our time and where we invest our money is evidence of where our priorities lie. It's not just about what we do with our money, but it is also about what we do with our money. We've talked about the tithe before in the church. In the Old Testament, God tells God's people, Israel, to give the first 10% of everything they receive to God. And I know we don't follow all the commands of the Old Testament anymore, so I found what Jesus says about giving. He says in Matthew 19, 21, if you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Okay, so that's pretty clear. And I think most of us might choose to go with the Old Testament on this one, right? Maybe a little easier to give 10% than to sell all that we have and give it away. Now, I know it can be hard from giving a smaller amount or even not giving at all to just suddenly giving 10% of our income to the church or to other causes. And we, have, we all have financial limitations. We have budgets. We have commitments. We have physical needs. And God knows this. So first, I invite you to just take stock. Just pause where you are. What percent of your income do you give to the church and other causes? If you don't know, maybe it's time to check. Look it up. Just see where you are. You might be surprised. Now I completely understand. We also give of our time and talents and in other ways to God. And that is so good. It's important to give of our abilities as well. But it's also important to give of our finances. I once heard a pastor explain that when we give, it's not for God. God doesn't need your money. Sorry, God does not need your money. God is God. When we give, we give for ourselves. God gives us all we have, the ability to work, people to support us, gifts and talents. And God tells us to keep 90% of that and to give 10% to God and others. This is God's way of helping us to let go of the control that money can have on our lives. So just look at how much financially you are giving to the church and to other causes in your life. And I would challenge you, first, once you do that, to then consider making a regular gift to the church if you don't do so already. Many of us only give when we come in person or when we think about it, but giving isn't a tip or, or a reflection of the quality of worship that day. It's not contingent on how we see God serving us on a Sunday. Giving is an act of worship to God. Now, second, if you're already making a regular gift to the church, that's great. I'm so thankful for your faithfulness. We've seen that the giving, uh, pledged giving, the giving that is regularly committed to our church has stayed consistent throughout the pandemic. And that is amazing. That is a testament to your faithfulness. It's a great spiritual practice. And I would just challenge you, if you're not at that 10% giving number, 
just to consider increasing your amount 1%. Just look at your budget, see maybe where you could make a few changes just to get a little bit closer to that 10% goal. Again, God doesn't need our money. This is for us. This is a spiritual exercise to let go of that control that money can have on our lives. Friends, giving is freedom. When we give, we share with others in a deeper way. When we give to the church, we make a greater impact than we can just make on our own. We try to make sure that as the church, you know the impact that your gifts have on our church and community. Your gifts allowed us to provide backpacks and uniforms for students starting school last week. Your gifts allow us to send medicines to our sister church in Cuba. Your gifts allow us to provide space to keep our building open for community groups to meet in a safe place. Your gifts support the ministries that we do with children, youth, and adults on Sundays and throughout the week. Our church can't do any of that without your financial giving. We have had some unexpected building repairs come up this year. We've had some plumbing issues. We have some roof leaks that we're trying to deal with. We have uh, replacement appliances and a new air conditioner for the parsonage. And all these things might seem like small expenses on their own, but they add up and we need your help. Often we like to think of what the church can do for us, and that is part of being the church. This is a season where our church needs us to step up. Now you hear me talk every week about the ways you can give. You can give in person, online, through texting, and there is a link in the video if you're watching. You can give in person, you can take a picture of the QR code. And I also realize that many of you give sacrificially. And I am so honored for the many ways that you support our ministry. However you choose to give, I encourage you to give as you're able. Some of us have had to cut back on spending during this pandemic season, and the church completely understands that. I never see how much anyone gives to the church. I just see the overall total of what's collected each week. So don't feel bad or guilty if you can't give like you might like to right now. And don't feel like your gift doesn't matter. As a church, it's about what we all do together. The sum is made up of each one of us. There's no one person in these photos. All of us came together to make this happen. If you can give a little more, it will help our church to continue to serve and do ministry through this hard financial season. If you're someone who just gives to the church when you remember, when you think about it, I would challenge you to make a commitment to give a set amount for the rest of the year. It can be any amount. Just pick a set amount and commit to giving that amount to the church. You can set up a recurring gift online to give weekly or monthly, whatever works. The commitment of giving regularly is part of that process of letting go of the hold that money has on us and our worries. You can let us know about your commitment. There's blue cards in the back of the sanctuary, or you can email office at semheights.com or even fill out the form uh, there on our website. I told this story at the beginning of the pandemic. Actually, this story I told the first Sunday that we didn't have in-person worship, but I think it's a great example of giving to God to give thanks. So last year, a few weeks before everything shut down, a church member told me that he found $50, a $50 bill in a store parking lot. And he went to the store, no one had lost anything or reported any money missing, so he took the money home. He was waiting for a good cause. He knew he wasn't gonna spend that money. That Sunday, I mentioned that our sister church in Cuba needed a laptop to project the words they sing during worship so that folks could sing along. 
and he did not hesitate. He knew that this was the cause that he had been waiting for. So he gave his $50 toward that laptop and that gift covered the exact amount that we needed to be able to pay for that laptop and to be able to get it down to Cuba. Now this person isn't rich. $50 could mean a lot to him and his family. They have bills and doctor's appointments. He's on a fixed income, but they're able to make ends meet. He didn't need the $50, though it would have been nice, so he gave it away. Money does not have a hold on him at all. What would you do with an extra $50? Would you give it away? Would you use it to buy that thing you've had your eye on? Friends, let's live as wise people, giving thanks to God for all that God has given us through our worship, through our actions, through the ways that we treat others and care for our community. Let's give what we can to God, since God first gave everything to us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now going to move into our closing song. I invite you to continue to worship together. Well, as Ethan Paul and Judy sing. <laughs>
Now receive the blessing of God, who loves you, who knows your heart, and who invites you to continue to grow and share God's love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.